Hello, my name's Amanda Little and welcome back to my channel, Little Quilt House. Today I'm really excited to be taking part in the Sew A Top video hop hosted by Claire over at Penguin and Pear. I'll leave all the details in the description box below so that you can catch up with all the previous participants and with, I think there's, I believe there's one more tomorrow after uh, my video. So today I'm going to be showing you uh, or talking to you about the top that I chose to make. Yesterday's video, no I'll, I'll just start again. Oh. So yesterday's video was brought to you by Sew Notes, myself today and then tomorrow the final one is from She Loves to Sew. The video hop has gone all through August. I'll leave a link in the description box for you so that you can catch up on any of the videos that you might have missed. So the top that I chose to make was McCall's 8144. It's a new pattern due out um, this autumn. Possibly you can get it in the US. I don't think you can get it as a hard copy yet in the UK. So I chose to um, download it as a PDF. I've used PDFs in the past, but I've never used one of the Big Fours PDFs, so I thought this would be a good time to give it a try. The fabric that I chose to make the top from is from TGF Fabrics. Again, I'll leave a link. It's a faux Angora jersey. It's about 60 inches wide. It's really lovely and soft. It was approximately £10 per metre. I will double check that, I'm sure it was. And it's it's gorgeous. This colourway is burnt orange. They've got loads and loads of different colours, uh, every, every colour you could possibly think of, and lots of other different jerseys, cable knits, waffle knits, plain t-shirt weights. It's really well worth having a look at their website. I ordered on... Monday and I think I got it on the Tuesday so the service was really good even in these strange times when um, postage can be a little bit slower. So that was the fabric. I pre-washed it on a 40 degree wash and I did tumble dry it on a low heat um, just in the same way that I'll be looking after it now that it's made up uh, as a garment. It's a really snuggly, cosy um, weight jersey. It's not heavy um, and it's not light. <laughs> it's, it's just medium weight, um, but great, I think, uh, for a transitional piece as we go into the autumn months. And it was also uh, work well with another layer underneath, perhaps um, to see me through the winter. I did film the process as I was making the top up. I'll put that on in a second, um, but just a brief overview. Um, the PDF I found to be fine, absolutely no problems. I think the website that I downloaded it from was called So Delightful. Um, just registered, downloaded it, printed it. It went together more or less like your standard PDF. Um, nothing, you know, sort of out of the ordinary in particular. The only thing that I have noticed is that all the measurements are in imperial. Um, the yardage measure measurements are imperial. So I did have to convert that into meterage because we buy our fabric uh, by the, the meter in the UK. Um, it doesn't bother me. I, I still work in imperial, but if, if you're used to um, working in centimetres, then perhaps that's going to slow you down slightly. I'm not sure whether that'll be any different on the paper pattern or whether it will read the same on the paper pattern as it did on this PDF. The sizing is pretty standard as in all the big four patterns. Uh, this one came in small, medium, large, extra large, XXL. I'll pop those up, um, perhaps do a screenshot so that you can see the different sizes. Um, so not massively inclusive, just your standard size range. The yardage was uh, for this, I've made a large by the way, which I think is a 38 to a 40 inch bust. It's pretty true to size. I ordered uh, a two metre length of fabric and I, I'll show you in a second, I've actually cut the longest length that I, I could um, just because I've got a long torso. Usually I would um, lengthen a pattern, a bodice pattern by almost two inches and I wanted to, to do that just to see where the, the hem hit on this top 
and I'm glad I did. It's a really short top, that's something to perhaps be aware of. It does come up very short. Uh, I've still to hem it. I want to ask your advice um, when I stand up in a second, uh, just to see where you think the hem would look best. But anyway, from a two meter length of fabric, I've got a good 50 centimeters left. So I think you can trust the yardage quantities on the pattern envelope. It's a really quick and easy pattern to make up. It probably took me less than an hour. I use my overlocker throughout. I haven't uh, hemmed it yet, so I do need to add that to the makeup time. And I will use my cover stitch to finish the hem. You could make it on a sewing machine. You don't need an overlocker because it's a jersey fabric. It's not gonna fray. The instructions were fine, um, there's pictures, there's words, some of the methods were a little bit long-winded. If you stay um, to the end and, and watch the video where I make it up, you'll see I've taken a few shortcuts just from um, having made other patterns in the past. It, it just seemed a little bit strange that they were asking me to go, you know, sort of all around the, the reeking. Now I've used some water soluble basting thread and it's still visible in places. What I'm going to do once I have filmed this intro uh, and the outro, I'll wash the top so that it looks all pristine and I'm going to pop it on the mannequin and I'll just pan around so that you can see some of the, the details, the seams, that sort of thing. Um, I'll stand up for now anyway and you can have a quick look. As I say, I'd love it if you would um, stick around and watch me make the top. And I would also love it if you could subscribe to the channel and perhaps give this a thumbs up. I'd love to know um, your thoughts about the hem length. If you could leave me a comment, let me know which hem length you think is going to look best. Um, yeah, that would be great. So now I'll stand up, let you have a quick look, and as I say, I'll give you a much better close-up view uh, at the end of the video. So here's the top. It's got uh, a really nice cowl neck, um, slightly dropped shoulders, centre seam, which I quite like, but not entirely sure if it was needed. Perhaps it would be nice in a future version to top stitch, just make more of a feature of it, I don't know. Um, yeah, so drop sleeves, if I stand. <laughs> um, it's just pretty boxy. Now, on the pattern, there are three different versions. I have cut, I think, version C in the length, which is the longest version. Now it calls for a one and a quarter inch hem, which I think, I can't see myself at the moment, but that perhaps looks quite nice. And I would be able to put my arms up in the air and not show off any belly. But version A, which the rest of the top is, is um, if I bring that back down, version A would have your hem it at six inches shorter, which I do like the look, but practically for me, I don't think that that's going to work. I don't know. But as I say, leave a comment if you would, if you'd be so kind enough, um, just to let me know. I'm gonna leave it um, for a while and hem it perhaps next week once I've got everyone's feedback. I will, uh, whichever length I end up picking, um, I'll pop a photograph, a finished photograph onto my Instagram. So sleeves now, I love the sleeves. The pleat detail in the sleeves is gorgeous. Um, on trend, I suppose, with the big volume sleeves still. Um, now on the pattern, she does wear the cuffs down they're a little bit baggy, I'm not sure. I mean, the stretch is good in the fabric. Um, perhaps on a future version, I would uh, size down on the cuff. I could push it up and it would be more inclined to stay in place. But as I say, in the picture, she wore it down. I did ask my daughter to try the top on and perhaps I can bribe her to pop it on again and take another photo for you. She, uh, I'm 5'5", five five, she's 5'9". I'm short portly, she's long and lithe. Um, but even on her, the sleeves were, well, obviously a lot more baggy than, the, than they are on me, but the sleeves were still 
quite long on her so that's perhaps something to bear in mind you want to just you might want to say just pull those sleeves in a little bit if you choose to make this top um, I'll just quickly twirl around for you um, I will in a second take off the mic sorry it's, uh, I know it's in the way but I'll do a quick twirl without the mic and then we'll just get cracking straight into the video and I'll hopefully see you at the end I've cut out all of my pattern pieces. I've just gone for a standard size large throughout. The only change that I've made, if at all it is a change, I want to make version A, but because I know that I've got a long torso, I've left it at version B, thinking I can alter that at the end if needs be. I've transferred my markings just using um, bird a copier paper and a serrated tracing wheel. It didn't work particularly well. You can see just about the triangles there and there and the fold line. I knew that it wouldn't work very well because it was a knit fabric and because of the sort of faux angora fibres um, it, it just makes it difficult for the uh, chalk to show up. But it'll do. Now the pattern calls for a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way through. That's fine. I do struggle with my overlocker maintaining a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. The markings aren't that clear. I'm fine with a 3 8 or a quarter of an inch. But what I've done to maintain that 5 8 of an inch, I've actually basted my seams. And I'm using a thread. I tend to use this thread when I'm... Um, based in quilts on the long arm machine. It's a haberdash thread, it's called Perish, and it's water soluble. So if I just bring the water over, you can see it's just dissolving as soon as it hits the water. So I'm going to overlock, that will be my stitch line but I'm not going to need to worry about removing those basting stitches after the garment's finished because as soon as it goes into the wash all of this white coloured thread will dissolve. So to begin I'm going to, this is the uh, front piece, I'm going to sew, there's a centre front seam, I'm going to sew down that seam on the overlocker. I hope you can see this okay. So here is the uh, 5 8 of an inch seam allowance marking on my machine. And it, it's just out in the middle of nowhere and I just really struggle to maintain that. There is a tiny little mark there and that is where the left hand needle forms the stitch. So because I've put the basting stitches in I'm going to line up those basting stitches with that marker there and hopefully get a really accurate 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So you can see that the bits that have trimmed away are pretty uniform in width and that my uh, the left hand needle has formed its stitch line right next to or almost on top of that row of basting stitches. The thread that I've used is colour 589 and I think that's a pretty good match. So that's the centre front seam completed. Now in the pattern it makes no mention of finishing this, what will be uh, a raw edge. I know it doesn't matter with a knit, with a, a jersey fabric, um, but I would rather finish that. So I'm just going to now whiz across that raw edge with the overlocker before we move on to the next stage. You can see I've just got the fabric on the machine. I've got the raw edge against that little guide mark so that I'm, I'm just skimming the edge, barely taking anything off at all just to neaten that raw edge.
I'm going to repeat that process now to the back piece, which is identical. So as before, just lining up that raw edge, with that groove. So this is the back piece, right sides facing up. I've edge finished the neck just there. And we're now going to lay on top, right sides facing, the front piece, which you can see is slightly larger than the back. Now the pattern would have us, or the pattern instructions rather, would have us match up the notches on both shoulder seams and so at five eighths of an inch all the way around and then between those two circles reinforce for perhaps an inch either side and then clip into that portion and then bring it forwards and forwards. These seams would have been opened and you would sew that to the seam which just seems a little bit odd to me so I'm going to go off piece slightly I am going to match my notches match all the way around but then I'm just simply along that fold line going to fold the front over fold the back over and at that fold line just sew the whole thing together. I'm going to pin, I like to use the ballpoint, um, I'm not sure if they're glass or plastic headed pins, but these are nice, they don't seem to snag the jersey fabrics. So I'll go ahead and pin that together and baste it and let you see it before I pop it underneath the overlocker. So I've basted the front to and back together at the shoulder seams, wrong sides together, this with the centre seam is the front, with the cowl portion folded forwards, the back, right side, wrong side, with the cowl folded forwards on top of that front cowl, and then I've based it again with that perish water, uh, water soluble thread, just to keep everything in position. There are some notches, I've matched the notches. So now I'm just going to whiz across with the overlocker at a 5 eighths of an inch seam. So the seams are now sewn. All we need to do now is turn it the right way around. And there's that lovely cowl neck and the shoulders starting to form. Inside it's good and neat. As I say, all of these basting stitches are just going to disappear as soon as the, the water hits it. And I think that's a much quicker, easier way than um, the McCall's instructions would have you construct it. Now it's time to make the sleeves. We need to pleat across the bottom edge and the way it wants you to do that is to bring the smaller circles to make that large circle in the centre. I've done that on the sleeve already and I've gone across with that perish water soluble thread again. I've gone approximately three eighths of an inch and six eighths of an inch, just the width of my sewing machine foot. So my actual stitching, the permanent stitching is gonna hit somewhere in that channel there. Um, I've done both sleeves. If I bring back the top, as it stands at the moment. The pattern would now have you sew up the side seams. Sew up the side seams 
of your sleeve and insert it in the round. Now, I'm not keen on inserting sleeves in the round. If I can get away with it, I will always try to insert the sleeve on the flat. And that, I think, is what I'm going to attempt to do. And it should be fairly easy. It looks reasonably straight. So I'm going to do that. I'm just going to baste it in first and then with the overlocker, so at a 5 eighths of an inch seam. So this is wrong sides facing up. You can see I did manage to get that sleeve in on the flat. I've basted it, I've pressed what little seam allowance there is towards the back of the top. So I'm now just going to overlock both sleeves in with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So the underarm and the side seams are now joined. Using those basting stitches means that you get a really nice intersection at the underarms. All that we've got left to do now with the sleeves is to pop the cuffs on. This is the cuff piece. You cut two out and then just simply Fold in half, wrong sides together, so with a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance, I've gone ahead and basted this one. Let me just put this to one side. So I've gone ahead and basted this one. I'm going to overlock at a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and when that's finished, we then just simply turn it inside out and then just attach it to the sleeve. I've tried these, I've found in the past that some patterns, the cuffs, can be especially tight. I know that I've got sausage-like arms but this cuff seems to fit really quite generously. So I'm going to go ahead and um, baste this piece and then overlock the pair and come back and show you how to um, attach them to the, the sleeves. The cuff pieces have been overlocked. I'm now going to turn them both right sides out. There is a little notch at the top to match up and that notch should match up with the notch that's on the cuff. So if I turn it and pop a pin and then I'm going to match up that seam allowance with the underarm seam allowance. So I'm just going to continue now pinning them together and I am going to baste them just because there's a lot of bulk. I want the pleats to stay nice and crisp. And then once they're basted, I'll whiz round with the overlocker again at 5 eighths.
So to summarise, I really love the pattern. I'm going to try the other two versions of it. Um, I'm not sure that I would buy another PDF from McCall's or the other Big Four if... <laughs> Sorry, the dog just wouldn't leave us alone. Um, I'm not sure if I'd buy another PDF unless I was really desperate to get a pattern that hadn't been released in the UK before um, already. Uh, this one, as I say, I don't think you can get it yet as a paper copy. Um, so uh, on this occasion, I, I was happy to pay uh, a little bit more than I would normally. I think it cost me £11.19, where usually for a McCall's pattern, I would pay £10, £10.50. So a little bit more expensive. Um, I had to pay um, a bit more than I normally would and um, it was a 48 page PDF to print off and obviously you've got the time factor of sticking the pieces together um, but if, if you want it now then it's definitely uh, an option. I do hope you've enjoyed my review, I hope it's been useful if you're considering making the pattern yourself. Um, don't forget to backtrack uh, the whole of August. There's been a different vlogger every day reviewing a different top. I'll leave all the links in the description box so that you can catch up if you've missed any. Tomorrow um, it rounds off with She Loves to Sew. So stick around and watch uh, that review too. Big thanks again to Claire at Penguin and Pear for hosting the Sew a Top video hop 2020. I've really enjoyed taking part and hopefully it's going to be something that um, is run on an annual basis and I might be able to take part in it next year. I'm hoping to have uh, a lot more time now to do um, YouTube videos. I've been released from my homeschooling duties so um, uh, as well as the long arm quilting which I uh, run a little business um, I really love dressmaking to, for, for myself, so I'm going to um, get the camera out and record myself as I make my outfits. Hopefully I'll have another video out in the next week or two. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and I would also like um, your feedback on how I should hem this thing. Um, so uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Take care. See you soon. Bye.